Until its defeat in 2006, the Liberal Party of Canada had been in government for 71 of the previous 100 years, longer than the PRI of Mexico, longer than the Maoists of China, longer indeed than virtually any party of any country on any continent under any system of government. How the mighty have fallen. Perversely, yet predictably, the Liberal Party became a victim of its own success. Its long association with government made the party a magnet for individuals drawn to power rather than to public service, a tool of Liberals of convenience rather than Liberals of conviction. After its catastrophe in the general election, the question confronting the party is not whether it can rebuild its fabled political machine into one capable of waging an effective campaign. It is whether it can rediscover its ideals and return a party deserving of our nation's trust. If it is to have any hope of doing so, it will need to find the courage to resist the lure of comforting self-deceptions and easy answers. Its decline at the polls has not been due to some lapse in judgment by a rueful electorate that yearns to repent at the next election. It has not been a want of resources that can be remedied by bagmen or ward healers. It has not been the absence of an imagined messianic leader whose charisma could substitute for policy or grassroots renewal. The Liberal Party instead received a calculated rebuke from Canadians against the hubris they saw gnawing at it. The irony is that the tenets of liberalism remain as resonant with Canadians today as during the Liberal Party's salad days. It is why, in an effort to capitalize on its electoral successes, the NDP is debating stripping the word socialist from its constitution. It is why the Conservative Party leader describes himself as a classical liberal. The ideals of liberalism are founded upon a single article of faith, that liberty is the highest political good, and that as a result, the first duty of government is to seek the greatest liberty for the one that is compatible with liberty for all. It holds that every right is balanced by a corresponding responsibility. It believes in the equal dignity of all citizens and equality of opportunity, but it rejects equality of outcome, insisting instead that people of unequal talent and industry should reap as they sow. It celebrates individual initiative and looks towards a vision of society as a meritocracy and expects those who benefit the most from society to bear the greatest responsibility towards society. Ultimately, liberalism holds that a nation is bound together by a social contract because the interests of each individual are inextricably linked to the well-being of every other member of society, making prosperity and social justice inseparable. The 20th century began as the age of dictators and autocrats. It ended with liberalism having come of age as the ascendant political philosophy across the world. Yet liberal parties everywhere are in crisis. Can they grow with the success of liberalism, or have they been outgrown by the success of their own political philosophy? The Liberal Party of Canada has four years to decide. For The Agenda with Steve Pakin, I'm Akash Maharaj.